there, everyone. Happy Tuesday, and thank you for joining me here tonight. Thanks, replay viewers, for watching. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time here on Facebook Live, and it's a chance that we can relax and craft together. And it's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, so tonight, you guys, we are continuing on the houseplants embroidery. So there we are. This is the embroidery of the month at Penguin and Fish. Uh, so it is available for the rest of February. So you can check that out. I have a link below for that. It's on the Penguin and Fish page at the embroidery of the month tab. So uh, we're going to be working on some backstitch again. So this was all backstitch. We're going to do the backstitch of this little pot and we are going to be focusing on those French knots today as well. Um, maybe we'll even get to this guy and we can do some of these lazy daisy stitches, but I, I want to for sure go over French knots tonight and uh, really talk about the three things you might be doing wrong with your French knots that might be throwing you for a loop. Um, that might, you know, if you're struggling with French knots, I bet you you're doing at least one, if not more, of these three things. So we'll go over that uh, once we get done with the outside of the pot. So thank you again for joining me, everyone. Uh, the pattern is still available. It is a, it's a printable digital download, so you'll get it right away. Uh, if you are, if you bought the bundle, we are out of bundles, but if you did purchase the bundle, just check... Uh, your email, there will be a download now button. Uh, you, you get the actual printable pattern as well. Uh, it's just you have to click that download button in your receipt, email receipt. So check that out. So thank you guys again. I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started tonight. Okay, so here again, I have my iPad with the, the, uh, with the pattern up. So uh, this is what you get. Uh, this is the digital pattern. You can print this out. I typically print it out, but uh, I just need it right now for the colors. So I'm going to just uh, page three of it, which shows me the colors and uh, what stitch goes where. So that's, uh, I'm gonna have this up. I can make it even a little bit bigger. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna use as my guide so I know kind of what colors to do. So next up, I think we will stitch this little orange line, and uh, then I'll stitch uh, this little red pot, and then we'll work on his smile and those two French knots, and then we'll move on to the next guy after that. But uh, we'll we'll uh, check in with those French knots uh, just to see if you guys are uh, doing them okay or not. All right, so. Getting, oop, getting situated here. Oh, you've been looking forward to this all day. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so here's where we left off. We got his little stocks done. Uh, let's get it back in the hoop. I did take it out of the hoop. I probably didn't need to, but I do like taking my embroideries out of the hoop when I'm not working on it. Uh, then, it, you know, you see this kind of crease it doesn't get so severe. You could also wrap your hoop in fabric. That helps with that. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to be getting this wet to take off the um, stick and stitch embroidery stabilizer here that, that we printed the pattern on. Uh, so once I get this wet, you know, all those crinkles are going to go away anyway. So I suppose I shouldn't be too worried about them staying. Oh, Sally, you love our sessions. I do, too. <laughs> um, uh, if it wasn't for for these sessions with you guys, I wouldn't be doing, like, hardly any crafting at all. So this is, like, the best part of the day. I get to hang out with you guys, and I get to, I get to make stuff. <laughs> so I love it. All right. Let's do him right there. And last night we already cut... Um, some thread, but oh, we need that orange thread. So that's part of this, this group. So I'm going to just, again, I'm going to unroll both of these at once. And uh, then I will trim my, my 24 inches or so of both. And then I'll just get rid of that 
blue. We don't need that right now. Okay, that's for later. But I've already already cut it, so that's good. Oh, thanks, Alicia. So, all right, this uh, is that six strand embroidery floss again, and it has it's made up of six strands. Uh, but we've been stitching with three for this, and really, again, uh, to uh, this is my floss thickness guide that we made. The real difference between the six and three is just how thick do you want your line. So this is all six strands right here. Uh, it is quite a bit thicker than three strands. Uh, sometimes six strands can be a little bit more difficult to pull through the fabric, just because you are there is just a lot more that you're pulling through, like these tiny little woven bits of the fabric. So I, I just, you know, I've just always done three and I like, I kind of like that thickness. I know a lot of people err on the side of two, but really look, you can get such fun texture by mixing it up. This is six strands up here and this is just one strand. So, I mean, I can imagine doing like little blades of grass with one strand and big like poofy flowers. Like there's just really um, a lot of room for flexibility, but just for, just to keep it simple, I am doing my whole piece here with um, with three strands. If you're using a mix or just, um, you know, if you're stitching this at all, I would love to see it over in our Penguin and Fish Crafters group. You can post post photos there, so uh, be sure to join that as well here on Facebook. All right, to separate the threads from the six strands uh, to just three, I am first just kind of isolating one strand and holding the rest with my fingers. I'm just gonna yank on that. It comes out just super easy. It looks crazy, but once the thread pops all the way out, uh, the rest just sort of relaxes. I just run my hand through there to straighten it out again. And that's all there is to it. So let's do two more, and you can actually go pretty quick. Like, it, it really does go faster um, and with less knots than if you try to pull, like, three strands apart from each other, and just slowly. So um, I, I do like this method. I'm a convert. I never used to do it this way, but after after giving it a go a few times, I uh, I do really like separating my threads that way. And then I just um, kind of line up the ends and uh, pull them all, run my hand down there, pull them all back together. Oh, got a little bloopy here. Let's just do that. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna thread this. So I'm not putting a knot in. We're going to do how we did last night. I'm just going to weave in the backs of the stitches that are already there. What we're doing right now, we're just doing this, like, literally just this one little line. <laughs> He's got one little line in him that is a different, a different color. Uh, but this color shows up in other parts of some of these other fellers, some of these other uh, succulent pots. So... Uh, it kind of helps bring all the colors together by just having these little bits of color here and there that mimic other other ones. So I'm weaving in the ends uh, three times, the one, two, three. Uh, it's that third time that locks it in. There we go. That's not going anywhere. And I'm just going to snip that little end. I probably don't really need to, but I don't like any of those little frayed ends. Uh, that can, you know, accidentally come to the front those little frayed ends, and then you have to snip them, and that gets annoying. So uh, we are snipping close to the edge, and uh, we have a nice flat back here. Nice, clean, clean back there still. All right, we are on the, the back stitch still. So I'm starting here, but since it's the back stitch, I'm actually starting a stitch in, and then we'll go backwards. So if I'm stitching this direction, I'm starting a stitch over, going backwards, and then coming up a stitch away, going backwards again. So eventually we are moving into that, that direction. All right, so here's my first backwards. Did I use the, I'm using, oh no, the whole, the entire length of the strand um, that was rolled up. No, I, I still cut it to that 24 inches or so. And then I'm just using the three, the three strands. Um, Gretchen asked if I using the entire, the entire strand. 
Nope, that's just a little too long. I probably could, you could, but you'd be pulling it and pulling it and pulling it through. Um, you'd be stretching your arm way out. Um, even with, you know, you can shorten your strand by pulling the non-working part of the strand. Um, but even doing that, I would still be stretching my arm way out. So I, I tend to stick to this 24 inches. You can use the whole thing. I just think it's, it ends up being extra work to pull, to keep pulling it. Cause then you'll be like going like this and this and this. Um, I like just having it just long enough to move my arm just a little bit. And <laughs> that's it. We're done with that color uh, uh, for him right now. So I'm just gonna weave in the ends. Really, if I wanted to, I could jump over to this guy and um, and start that because this this pot is this orange color. But I think I am gonna do the thing where I don't make any leaps to the next to the next um, character. I'm just gonna kind of keep it all uh, ingrained here. And that actually, if you're st stitching this onto a tea towel, uh, that might be a good idea because then you don't have any what we call toe catchers, we, you don't have any big leaps that um, a finger could get caught underneath or anything, which, you know, if, you're, if your back is going to be exposed, like if you're doing a tea towel, um, then the less things that um, can get caught on these back stitches, the, the better. All right, so I'm doing my three woven in bits again there. All right. Okay, and this um, strand is plenty long enough yet. I, I'm gonna save that. I'll use that again later for sure. All right, what is next? I think now we do that red. So I'm gonna do this red quick, and then we will work on these French knots. I'll probably show you like a French knots down here first, but then we will we'll jump back up there for those French knots. I'll probably do a French knot stitch a little mouth, and then jump back up and do a French knot, and then we'll weave in the ends. But I'm jumping ahead. Let's do this red cute little pot. I'm just imagining these like little ceramic pots. <laughs> Makes me want to go out and um, collect a bunch of more cute pots. There's a bunch of um, ceramic designers in town here that do just like the cutest little coffee cups and stuff, and it'd be fun to just get some really decorative pots from them. Yay, Christy, who says that she's working on this tonight. Oh, that's caught in my shirt here. Oh, so Don says that she is doing a tea towel, and she has several away knots on hers. Jeez, I'm getting caught on this again. It keeps uh, grabbing my sweater here. So that's cool. So yeah, we will do another away knot later um, today when we start this guy. So I can show you guys, if you missed yesterday, I'll show you what, what we're talking about with an away knot. So Don, I'm curious, um, do you weave in your away knots right away? Or do you have a pile of away knots that you snip all at the end and then weave in? I've done, done it both ways. Kind of like doing it as I go versus leaving a bunch. I suppose it depends on how I feel though. I just want to keep stitching and I'll just leave them be. All right, run my hand through here again, just straighten it all out. Oh man, I think this might be. I might have stretched the. Oh no, it's about 24 inches still. I was thinking if I was getting greedy with my inches here. But nope, I'm still around that 24 inches. So I'm doing that pinch method again of threading. That's where I uh, make a, uh, uh, trying to get the focus here. I make that pinch motion and at the moment I slowly unpinch, the moment I see that color coming through, I'm going to just lay my needle right on top. You can even kind of wiggle it down in, in between your fingers and uh, that basically threads it. Then I just keep pushing. I grab it from the other side. You can grab it with another hand if you want to. Uh, but that's that's how I like to do it. Oh, you weave them all in when you run out of floss. That makes sense, Don. Okay, back to this guy. Again, I'm going to just weave in the ends. So what I got going on there already. Uh, let's just pick one of these fronds. 
weave it in right here. You don't have to match, you know, colors when you weave it in or anything. Alright, second one. So I'm just going to pull on this. I wonder, so like with two, I don't think going twice is enough. Yeah, because see, if I'm pulling on this, see how it's pulling these threads? So that is not entirely secure. It's really that third third round going through as many stitches as you can that locks locks it in. There. See now now if I pull on it, that's that's not coming out anymore. I'm snip those little ends away. Okay. And uh, then let's start. What side did I go on? Okay, that side. Start stitching these guys. I think I'm just going to start at this corner and uh, we'll, we'll go around. So, this is why I stitched this line first because now I can cross over with this stitch. I can cross over that end point, and I think that just kind of makes it look nice and nice and finished. It's easier to do than trying to push this out of the way and then try and get up um, to do this orange. So again, it's like doing the things that are most, the lines that you want most up front, doing those last is kind of how I plan, map out the embroidery when I go. Oh, it's nice seeing you, Kathy. Uh, yeah, the replay will be up on YouTube here at um, Penguin and Fish Movies. I upload that right when when we get done in the evenings. All right, and speaking of doing it, the frontmost uh, lines at the end, here's a case where I'm going to stop stitching this line and I'm going to jump and do this just to, um, because this is kind of a further back line, I want this line to sit on top. So I'm going to stop the line I'm working on. I'm going to stitch the couple stitches to get this bottom area done, and then I'll continue that line so it sits, sits on top still. I could do this one long stitch, but let's, let's split it into two. This red is really bright. I like it really shiny and bright. All right, so after this stitch, I'll continue on the line and we'll be able to cover up cover up those end points, which is which is nice, I think. All right, so like right here, we'll cover up that first point. And this next stitch will cover up that second point. And it'll still look like the, the this bottom pot line is in front. Oh, he's, he's looking cute, little red. All right, so the mouth, I'm just thinking ahead, the mouth and the eyes are black. So we'll do that all at once. Oops, I think I got a little fuzzle in there. Yep, out of here, fuzzle. All right, I think I got about two stitches to reach that end point there. Oh man, you guys, we woke up again with a layer of ice and snow on the car. <laughs> it was um, high 30s yesterday, and uh, it, it, it rained a little bit, but oh man, that rain turned to ice overnight. And uh, the roads got nasty this morning. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I think it's going to be warmer later this week, which will be nice. <laughs> And spring is almost in the air, just almost. I can I can tell it's coming, but ugh. Then you get a hit hit by a a morning where you're scraping the car again, and that's no fun. <laughs> Aw, see right here again. I wanted it, 
uh, this this top is kind of um, like the bowl. That rim of the bowl would be in front of all these aloe stalks, so um, that's why I'm stitching it last, and look, it's covering up all these little end points, and I think that just makes it look really kind of clean and nice. Yeah, all the highways were super backed up. Oh, yay! Oh, yeah, Robin, I need to, I'm not done with the Mandela love one yet, either. <laughs> that's awesome that you got the other two ready, that's, that's cool. Yeah, one of these weekends I'll have to work on the Mandela love. I need that towel. It's time to replace all our tea towels. I think they're just all getting gross. So I can finish that um, finish that mandala love one and get that one in rotation. That would be nice. Well, that one might be too pretty to use, but you know, it's like the fabric. If I use it, if I use the towel, then I'm honoring the towel, right? <laughs> I used to save fabric and not make anything out of it because it was too pretty, but now I'm, now I'm trying to use it. Oh, Dawn says her daffodils are coming up. Ugh, jealous. That's awesome. Oh, exciting. We have at least six inches of snow everywhere on the ground yet. All right, this is long enough, too, that I think I can use it for something else later. Actually, this might be the perfect amount to do these um, little lazy daisy stitches later, so that'll be good. I'll set that to the side. Okay, let's do... Oh, my gosh, she's looking cute. Let's do... Let's do, um, let's talk about French knots. So let's get some, um, of this black, black, um, I got the, uh, black thread already cut from when we cut a different color. So let's get our three strands and then we'll talk about the three things you may be doing that are, um, messing up your French knots. So, all right. I like just tapping the end a little bit. It uh, helps separate these. Threads. Okay, let's get our three. Oh, 60 there in New Jersey. Oh, man, that would be the most beautiful temperature right now if it was like that. Oh, you feel like you're in Florida. <laughs> oh, that is a beautiful number, 60. I, we have not gotten anywhere close to that yet, but 40 is starting to feel like it's inching towards that 60, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready for the windows to be open and to walk outside again and not be cold. I think um, I'm getting a little cabin fever -y. Oh, Nora, I love that. These are the three knots of French knots. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, funny. All right. So I'm going to just make a pile of French knots right here. And um, I, I'll, I'll, um, I was gonna say I'll delete them. I've been on the computer too long. I will cut them out later so so they don't stay. But um, we'll talk about them a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how to do one, and then I'll show you the three things that uh, could be going wrong. So for this, I, just because I'm gonna cut it out, I'm just gonna tie a knot, um, just to make it quick. I don't need a long piece to weave in my ends or anything. Um, all right, so. For French knot, you know what? I'm going to even draw a few dots on here. So I have this air erasable fabric marking pen. I'm just going to draw just so we can see. I'm going to just draw a few dots as if they're, you know, like these eyeball dots. Just draw a few on here. Okay. So here is how I like doing French knots. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a French knot on on this uh, dot right there. I'm gonna come up on one side of it. Then I, I always like kind of setting setting my piece down on a flat surface for this part. So I'm gonna hold hold the floss that's coming out of the fabric. I'm gonna hold that away from the fabric. Then I'm going to point my needle away from the fabric as well. So I'm pointing towards my fingers here. And I'm going to wrap around twice like that. So I just wrapped around twice. And then I'm going to put my finger on those loops. I want to hold those loops in place. I can let go now. Uh, now I'm going to point towards the fabric. So I'm going to move this out of the way and point towards. So I've just changed direction. And I'm going to put the needle on the other side of that dot. 
And I'm only going to put the needle in like halfway or so. So there we are. I'm about halfway. Then I can let go of those loops. And I'm going to just pull that thread. I'm still holding the needle, but I'm going to pull that thread so that the loops are right against the needle and against the fabric. Then at that point, I'm going to put my thumb right over Oops, sorry, I hit the, hit the camera there. I'm gonna put my thumb right over those loops to hold them in place. And I'm gonna hold those loops as I slowly pull that thread through. And when I can feel or see that it's all gone through, then I'm gonna move, move my fingers. So there we are, there's our little perfect French knot. Maybe the black wasn't the best way to show you guys, but um, there we go. Um, I'm gonna do it. I'll do one again just without going in super slow motion so you can kind of see what it looks like. And then we'll talk about the things that um, you may be doing wrong. So let's make that stitch. I set it down, do my two loops, point it back towards it, tighten it up, and get my finger in there and pull it through. So there we go. That's that's probably my normal speed. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We got two French knots. So uh, if you're having trouble, I suspect you're doing one or more of these three things. So the three knots for the French knot. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so the first one um, that you may be doing, so if you're trying your French knots, just this is your first checkpoint. So I'm coming up. And... Uh, now, instead of going away from the fabric with my needle, I'm going to go towards the fabric. So you're making two loops, right? And you could be doing everything else right. So I'm going to hold those loops. I'm going to go on the other side of that dot. We'll, even, we'll pull those loops up to the, to the end. So it looks like you're doing it right, correct? But then when we pull through, it the knot goes away. The knot goes away and you're left with just one, one little stitch. See, we don't have a knot there. It's just a little baby stitch. So um, again, if I exaggerate it a little bit, going towards, let's hold those loops. And you're just basically making, making a stitch. And that's because you are pointing towards the fabric when you make your knot. So instead of um, instead of pointing away, you're pointing towards. So you're basically just got some loops that you know aren't tying into a knot at all. It's basically like if you twisted like this and then stuck, you know, then did a like a little just a single stitch. Um, so switch back this way. You want to go away from the fabric not towards. So that's wrong. This is right. At this point, when you hold the loops down, that's when you turn and go towards the fabric. So you start away, then you go towards after you have those loops. So that's, that's the first thing you may be doing wrong. So if you're ending up with just little tiny stitch lines, uh, that's probably, probably the case. All right, so uh, the next thing you may be doing wrong, um, I'm just going to do one little stitch, we'll get to another, I'm going to just move over to another dot here. The next thing you may be doing wrong is going through the same hole. So I'm going to just come up right in the middle of this dot. Um, and I'm going to just come up here and I'm going to do everything else right. So I'm pointing the needle away, making my two loops, and then holding those loops there. But now, instead of like skipping a couple stitches, I'm going to go, let's see if I can recreate this. I'm going to go in the exact same hole, which is kind of what I think your instincts are going to want to do, right? So you can see, you can see that kind of big hole there. So I'm going to put the needle right back in the same hole. All right. And then I'm going to pull that tight and uh, finish the French knot. And it looks good, but however, if I pull a little too much, let's see if I can do it, it is going to slip. Oh, this one's pretty good. This one's a pretty big knot. 
but it could go through that hole. So I'm going to just, I'm going to try and exaggerate it to show you guys. So I'm going to just kind of make this hole pretty large here. Oop. And, uh, uh oh, I actually tied a knot in my thread there. There we go. So I'm going to do my French knot and go in that same hole. And as these French knots get like caught on stuff, that hole might get bigger and bigger and bigger. So as we go through there and we pull a little too hard, there we go. The knot just might pop right through. And look, then we're stuck with a knot on the back too, which is super annoying. That's going to be like impossible to take out. So not only do we lose that French knot, and probably not know why, uh, now we got a knot on the back as well in our in our thread. So that is coming because we've gone through that same that same hole. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but if you just if you start on one side of the hole of the dot, and then end up at the other side. Then you have all these threads in the way. So your, your knot cannot <laughs> pull through if there's all these threads blocking it. So that's, that's what I like doing. I like coming up on one side. I always kind of go on the bottom right side uh, for some reason. So I'm on kind of the bottom right side of that dot coming up. And then I go back in like the upper left. So see, I have all, all those strands of the fabric in the middle. And that's what's going to block it from your, your, um, your uh, knot from popping through to the back. There we go. A nice French knot again. So that's the second thing going through to the, going through the same hole. That could be the second thing you may be doing wrong. So check those two things. So right now you want the needle pointed away, not towards, and you want um, to not go in that exact same hole. So the third thing, the last thing you may be doing wrong, uh, let's let's do this not this uh, dot right here. The last thing that might be uh, um, giving you trouble is this part here. So you're doing it all right. We're pointing back towards uh, the fabric. And now when you're pulling the thread um, to the needle, instead of holding those loops there, if you just leave it all loose and pull the thread through, let's see if I can make it be weird, but like it might, your knots, your loops get a little loose and then you might not end up with a perfect French knot. You might end up, so you can kind of tell, it got a little loopier. If we go right on the side there, you can tell. There, it's this one. It got, it has this little bloop in it. It's a little taller. It's not quite a nicely tied knot. And that's at the best. At worst, you can get like these super big um, loopy, loopy um, knot. So let's just try and exaggerate that. Like if I didn't even tighten that there, you could end up, I bet you these feel, feel familiar. You might end up with a big loopy mess, right? So that is the third, third thing you could be doing wrong. Um, and again, to, to fix that, what I do is once we get to this point, I pull the thread. So it's up against the fabric there. And really, I just, I hold it there with my thumb or a finger, whatever I have available there that can reach. And I will hold those threads in place until my thread is all the way through. And there we go. So the three things you could be doing wrong with your, your French knots. <laughs> so if you are doing any one of those, then just, uh, just, check, check again. I will do one more. Oh, you have the loopy knots. Yeah, that's all of these are really, really common too. Oh, and surely you can, you can wind it more than two times, but I think for me, I like the two times around the needle. Um, I think the more you wind, the more you end up with 
you know, some big, some big bloops. But yeah, so again, I'm going to just walk you through the process one more time um, with all the right moves. So we got our dot. I'm going on one side of it. We're going to do our loops. I'm pointing the needle away. Um, it's kind of, you're kind of finishing a circle here. Like here you're doing like a teardrop. Here you're finishing this circle. So hold, hold that thread away and then point the needle away. Go around those, uh, that um, thread there. Hold those loops and then point it back towards the fabric. And I'm going on the other side of that dot. Like I'm leaping over that dot, really. Going halfway, pull those loops tight and then uh, um, hold, hold those loops as you stitch through. So there we go, pile of French knots for you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna snip, snip that. Um, I'm, I still wanna use, I have enough thread here that I can finish. Uh, oh, you did three, three loops on one and four on the other. It'll just be a little, a little bit bigger eye. That's, that's totally fine. All right, so I'm just gonna weave in the ends here. Uh, we'll jump, do this eye, and then I'll do that smile and do that, and then we'll weave in the ends over here. And we'll be done with this little feller. So black, you really can see on the back. So I try not to make big leaps. Like I, I, I wouldn't want to leap here all the way to here because I would probably see that big, big um, leap on the back just because if you have like a little bit of a see-through fabric, then you'll see that black line. I suppose we could snip all these while we're down here. Let's just snip all these little middle bits. That should do the job, I think. It's kind of cute little hairs. Let's just grab all those fine little guys. <laughs> uh oh, that guy's stuck still. I'm kind of sad to see these go. I should have just left them. Oh well. <laughs> Some of them don't want to leave. Come on this side. Let's do that one eyeball, and uh, then we'll get that little mouth. So I'm coming up on one side of that eyeball again. Do those little loops, pointing the needle away, then after pointing it towards, going on the other side of that eyeball. Actually three, three loops would be pretty cute here. It would just make the eyes a little bit bigger. There we go. First little knot. Um, I'm going to just jump down here and get this mouth done. The mouth um, is also black. I think, I don't know, three stitches. We could do three, like one, two, three. Or we could do four, like one, two, three, four. I think we're just going to do three. So let's go to about there. One horizontal one. Do three on the next guy. Yeah, I could I could do three on, on him. Let me just see what that looks like. I'll probably stitch the rest of him first. Uh, one of the, one of the things. So I don't always do French knots right away like this, but I, I like that we're going from like right to left. Um, and the reason being is that I don't the same reason I don't like knots on the back. Um, on the front, there's still that, you know, I could be stitching something way over here and then I could accidentally like wrap my thread and get caught on one of those French knots and that's just so annoying. So I, I, I will a lot of time, if it makes sense, um, do the French knots last. But this would be kind of weird to just leave all the French knots. I'd have to go back into each one of these. I, I think, you know, I think it's fine that I do the French knots as I go. but. If, if you are working on a piece and uh, it would 
if you're um, thinking, oh, you know what, I could probably do, like all this color is a whole pile of French knots or something, um, I would totally leave that to the end. Or I would, I would try to. There we go. All right, let's weave in that end. I think I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just jump over here and weave it into this red. my gloss there. So I think there's plenty of black here to do the eyes of the next guy, so I'm not going to toss this or anything yet. I can stick around in my giant floss pile for right now. Alright, so there's definitely time to keep working to keep to move on to this next guy. So I think I am going to start with an away knot um, just so I don't have any leaps going from this guy to that guy on the back. I think that'd be kind of nice. Let's just do that. I, I like that suggestion last night. Um, so let's give it a go. All right. I think I think I'm going to start with just the out outline of the stem guy here. I think this is actually called a stem. Um, I did look up, I did look up anatomy. It's, I think it's called the stem and it, these are called the spines. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I think I'm going to do that and then we'll go and do these lazy daisies. In theory, these lazy daisies are maybe behind this, but it doesn't give me that much to weave in for um, the ends of these lazy daisies. So if I do this back stitch first, I'll have all sorts of um, s stitches to weave in those. So I think I'm going to do this loop first, and then I will do do that flower. So all right, this uses the lightest color green. We haven't used that yet, so here we go. There's three different greens uh, in this, and this is this is the lightest. It's kind of more um, grassy. All right, let's separate our strands again. Do one. Two. The heater's on and the heater's blowing all my, uh, my strands up at me. Oh, just want one here. Side. Let's get these strands back together. We'll quickly do that back stitch. Then I want to do those lazy daisies. I think hopefully we have time to do that yet tonight. Then we have a whole pile more lazy daisy stitches over there. A lazy daisy stitch is um, just a single chain stitch that are kind of grouped together around a point there. All right, so I'm gonna start with the away knot again. And this, the purpose of this away knot is just to give us some slack, to give us a little bit of thread that we can later weave in so that we don't get any knots on the back, just like how we did this guy. So let's get that knot. Um, And I want to go like four inches or so away from what I'm stitching, and I don't really want to cross over. So I don't want to do a stitch up here because it'll cross over like my starting point if I start there. So I'm going to go like right here. You want to have it long enough that you'll have enough to, to weave in later. All right, and then I'm just going to come up. We'll start our back stitch. I don't know why I decided to go um, counterclockwise here, but it doesn't really matter, I suppose. <laughs> we have all these little spiky dews there, little spines that we'll get a stitch on. I'm excited for those. And those are, um, except for like this guy right here, I think they're they're all in front of this edge, so they'll look like they're popping off of the top of it.
So I think, so we have, we're, we'll be working on this through Friday, but Friday, I would for sure like to show you guys how to take this um, stick and stitch stabilizer off. So I'll, I want to make sure that we have enough time on Friday to do that. So I think come Wednesday, tomorrow, I think I'm going to just try and cruise through this. I mean, we did spend time working on those French knots. So I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe tomorrow we'll be able to finish this guy and this guy. That would be kind of nice. And then, um, then on Thursday, we'll do this guy and the grow, hopefully. And then on Friday, I'll show you how to take this embroidery stabilizer off. Oh, I, I, uh, I have a couple more koalas, Bonnie, um, but I'm, I'm waiting for the mail to come. So for some reason, the, the mail didn't come yesterday because it was President's Day. Um, so I didn't get Friday's mail, Saturday's mail, Monday's mail, and I didn't get Tuesday. The mail didn't come uh, to the office today either. So I'm kind of, I've been waiting for well, for today, really, for the mail to come, but it didn't come. So uh, hopefully I will catch it tomorrow, and I'm hoping there will be more koalas in there. But we are over the 100 koala point, which is crazy. It's so awesome that you guys made all of those koala embroideries. Um, and uh, I have a date. I kind of look at the calendar again because I forgot. But I do have a date that I'm going to be going to my... Uh, parents house and my mom and I will start sewing them up and we're gonna film that and I'm, hopefully we'll go live to to show you guys uh, where we're at but we're, we'll film it as well and we're gonna make a little little video so you guys can see the whole process um, but you know faster than <laughs> than it being live <laughs> all right so then that, that didn't take long at all we're already done with that um, little bloopy guy so let's weave in those ends. It's pretty on the back. It looks like a, a stem stitch on the back almost. But yeah, I think it's either the end of February or the beginning of the of March. I can't remember where where um, that went. So um, if you're just finishing it up, it'll probably still get to me yet if you want to get yours in the in the quilt. And, uh, we were talking, uh, since, you know, it is a hundred, that's a lot, that might be just like a really big quilt, so we're thinking uh, we could split it into two smaller but still, you know, good size quilts, and then we could do like a pretty border on it and stuff too. Um, some of you guys sent, sent fabric, and actually all the fabric from different people, they all, it all goes really well together, so we will use all that fabric um, for borders and uh, for the back and and all that and binding and it's just gonna look really cute I think oh so <laughs> I just, just got talking but that was our away knot here um, if you saw I, I cut that knot away from the front and that just left this extra little strand here and now that is just enough for us to weave in the end so that what that gained us is not having to start our row of stitching with a knot. Um, and from now on, we'll just weave in the backs of these stitches. But now this is like a freestanding piece. I didn't jump. I didn't weave in the end here and then jump over here. So you could have done that. But someone mentioned that I could do an away knot for each new, um, new cactus or new... Uh, succulent yesterday. I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of nice. Then, then each is its own. You could actually just stitch one of these. I think th these would be like really cute as a patch or something. Like if you uh, stitched one and then cut it out and sewed it onto some felt or something and put a pin on the back, it would just be like a really cute little, little um, pin, I think. All right, I want to show you guys, um, we're kind of wrapping up here, but I would like to show you guys how to do these lazy daisy stitches if you're wondering how to do that and if you're wanting to get ahead on this. Um, so that's red. I think I had enough red left over. Yeah, let's use that smaller, smaller piece here. So this is our leftover red. Ooh, I got a little knot in there. I'm going to just try and 
can do that before I tighten it too much. I just stuck the needle in there. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna thread my needle here and then I'll just weave into the ends, into the backs of uh, this green. See with the back stitch now I got like all that stuff to weave, weave through, which makes it easier. That's why I did the back stitch first. Ooh, this green and red are pretty together. But yeah, I'm super excited um, to work on the koala quilt. But yeah, um, if I do get the mail tomorrow <laughs> with more koalas, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the koalas again, the new koalas. Okay, let's do these. This lazy daisy stitch. So here are kind of the parts of a single chain stitch. So each one of these is a chain stitch. And what people call a lazy daisy stitch is basically several single chain stitches that all meet at a point or they all meet like around a center, like a, like petals going around a flower. In this case, they're all kind of going to the same point here. Um, so you want to, first of all, determine which is the point side and which is like the, the teardrop um, rounded side. You're going to start at at the center. So we do have that stitch kind of in the way, so I'm going to try and avoid that as best I can. There we go. Coming up right underneath that stitch in the middle. All right, so I'm going to make a shape with my floss that's similar to the shape of the stitch. So I'm going to do this stitch first. So I just kind of made a stitch like that, and then I'm going to go in the exact same hole so I'm just going into that exact same hole that I came out of. And then before I pull too far, I'm going to turn my needle around and come up right at like the apex of that, of that point there. So you can kind of see with this shorter thread, I've, I've made like this circle loop and now I got the needle in the middle of that loop. All right, so I'm going to pull up on that. And because I'm on the inside of that loop, it's going to catch the loop as it comes around. And I'm going to leave it, leave it loose. I like um, someone mentioned once, leave it lazy. <laughs> it's a lazy daisy. So leave it, leave it loose and lazy, relaxed. Like if I keep pulling on it, like if I'm pulling it really tight, then all of a sudden you can see that now it looks like just one fat stitch. We've lost our nice tear job. So I'm going to just loosen it up again and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to pull slowly. I'm going to just leave it in that teardrop shape. So it's just a little bit loose and that's not going to stay there on its own. Like if I move that, that's going to come up. So we need to anchor it down. So I'm going to just go right on the other side of that loop, right on the other side. Um, so just a couple fabric threads away from where I came out with, with this thread. So just on the other side of that loop and we're just going to tack it down. There we go. So it's got the tiniest little stitch up top there. And that is it. That is your lazy daisy stitch, your single chain stitch. Um, so now I'm going to do these other two. I'm going to start kind of into the exact same hole really come up. I'm going to kind of make this loop with my, my thread in that same shape. As, as this, and then we're going to go back in the same place we came out of, and I'm going to get that needle up at the apex of, of that shape, right in the middle of that circle, and as we pull, it's going to catch that circle as we keep pulling, and I'm going to leave it lazy, and we'll just tack it down on the other side of that loop, and there we go. So we have one more of those. And his little feathery flower top there is is done. <laughs> He's got like a fancy hat on. He's got a fancy big big bulgy hat with uh, some flowers on top. <laughs> there we go. Tack that down. And that's all there is. So for like a, a lazy daisy stitch, if, it, if we wanted it to look like a 
full flower, we would just keep going around that center with more more stitches. Like we just keep rotating. And sometimes people put like a little French knot on the on the inside of them. But so we're kind of mimicking a lazy daisy, but we're just only doing the three. Um, so that is the deal for that. He's coming along. Let's weave in at this end. I'm gonna jump down to this green again since it's got all sorts of nice spaces to weave in. Like three times again. Yeah, we had just enough red floss left over for that. The rest is um this is probably too short to do much with, so that will be a little scrap. Okay, so there we are. Our little second dude is started. Um, so I think that's where we'll end it tonight. Um, I do think we'll be able to crank through both of these tomorrow um, because we, we know everything that we're doing here already. It's, it's more back stitches. We know our French knots. This guy has, he doesn't have any French knot eyes, uh, but all of these little dudes are French knots, so we can get those done as well. Uh, I think if we can crank through these two tomorrow, uh, we will be in a great spot for finishing this on, on Friday. In a relaxed, chill manner, <laughs> which, you know, is exactly how an embroidery should be. It should just be... You should be just mellowing out your mind a little bit and just relaxing. <laughs> make your make your mind feel nice. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna flip you around uh, so you can see it, and uh, we'll call it an evening here. There. Hello again. Oop. There we are. So I just wanna. Uh, there goes the camera out there. <laughs> we'll duck. <laughs> All right. So here's what it's it's looking like. I always kind of like to see it next to a person, then you can um kind of see the size of it and everything, but oh, he turned out cute. I like him. Uh, I, I'm going to like doing um, this, this big leafy guy tomorrow too. So yeah, we'll crank through these two guys tomorrow. I think we'll just cook at it. We'll do, um, do those. And then Thursday, we'll do this guy at the grow. Friday, I will take off this stabilizer. And how we take off this stabilizer is kind of the same way you can take off that washable marking pen and actually I'll show you how to do that since we'll have water about I'll show you how you can if you if you traced it with that water soluble marking pen um, I'll show you how to take that out as well oh that is totally fine Gretchen take your time it is okay that you're slow it's meant to be slow <laughs> all right you guys so I'll get this up on YouTube at penguin and fish movies uh, this pattern is available just till the end of February, so you have one more week after this week. Ooh, you get an extra day, though, because there's uh, it's leap year this year. <laughs> so you get one extra day uh, to grab this pattern. It is only available now as a printable uh, digital pattern. If you do order it, it will come right in your order receipt. So you'll see that Download Now button. Uh, that's the pattern there, and it should download to your computer or your phone. Um, so it's in that exact same email uh, receipt, just if you're wondering where it is. So awesome, everyone. I will catch you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more koalas to share with you as well. So have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.